Bible Church say it. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. If you are coming for the first time, I hope you came with your Bible and you came with your heart because something is going to happen to you. And those who have been coming over and over, the Lord will reward your faithfulness in Jesus' name. The entrance of the word brings light, brings life, brings power, brings miracle. It will happen to you. Father, we thank you tonight for our Bible study. Thank you for your people who are faithfully coming. And thank you for those who are here today. We're asking, oh Lord, that tonight you touch every heart and every life in Jesus' name. Breathe upon the word. Let it penetrate every heart. And do something marvelous in every heart, every life, every spirit in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, to be awake and to understand your word. And we pray that faith will come as a result of the study of the word in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen before you sit down. Tonight we're coming to John and it's John chapter 11. From John chapter 11 I'm reading from verse 17. John 11 verse 17 then when jesus came he found that he had lain in the grave for days already now bethany was nice unto jerusalem about 15 furlongs off that's about two miles off and many of the jews came to martha and mary to comfort them concerning their brother then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, even now, even now, somebody said, Amen. Amen. Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Amen. Jesus says unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Amen. Martha says unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever, and whosoever, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She saith unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, truth, Lord. I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister secretly, saying, The Master is come, and he calleth for thee. As soon as she had that, she arose quickly. And came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet coming to the town. But was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house. And comforted her. When they saw Mary. That she rose up hastily. And went out. Followed her. Saying she goes unto the grave. To weep there. Then when Mary was come, where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. If you had been here, Lord, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, 
and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. He groaned in the spirit and was troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. He'll see you tonight. Verse 35, everybody, one, two, three, go. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself coming to the grave. It was a cave and a stone laid upon it. Those are the verses we're looking at tonight and there is life in every verse. By the time Jesus arrived, Lazarus had been dead for four days, yet he did not arrive late. Whenever he comes, whenever he gets to you, that's the right time. It's always in the right place at the right time. And here we are tonight in this place and Christ is here tonight. Here to touch your life. Here to solve your problem. You say, if this Bible study had been like about four days ago, it would have been better. This is the best time for the Bible study to come to you tonight. And it's coming straight to your heart. Coming straight to your life. And it's going to do something unforgettable in your life in Jesus' name. You see, Jesus had been there in spirit. And you've been following everything that happened. You understand? He had told his disciples, he said, Lazarus is sleeping. Oh, they said, if he's sleeping, he'll wake up. Then he spoke to them directly and he said, Lazarus, our friend, is dead. Let's go there. I'm going to wake him up. And he comes here tonight and he's going to wake you up in Jesus' name. You see, he had known all the details of everything happening to Lazarus. So he was there. He knew everything. Before he got there, there were sympathizers there. But you want to understand, all those sympathizers, 10, 20, 100, 1,000 of them, all of them put together cannot match the power of the Savior. The Savior is greater, is more powerful than all sympathizers that may come around you because he can do what they cannot do. And he will do what they cannot do. And in your life today, I thank God for the sympathizers that might be around you, for the friends that might be around you, and for the will, the will, the, the well wishers that may be around you. But all those people put together, whatever their sympathy, they cannot do what Christ will do. And Christ is here tonight, and He wants to do something marvelously great in your life in Jesus' name. Now, when Martha and Mary saw the Lord Jesus, you'll find out they said exactly the same thing. They have been thinking about the same thing. Look at verse 21 here. In verse 21, it says, Then Martha said unto Jesus, Lord, if thou art been here, my brother had not died. Verse 21, that's what Martha said. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, then when Mary was come, where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou art been here, my brother had not died. They said exactly the same thing. But Martha went he beat further. Look at verse 22. But I know. But I know. If you can tell yourself, and you can tell the Lord in your heart, but I know. But I know. Something will turn around. If you had been here four days ago, if you had been there before my brother passed on, something would have happened. But I know. Somebody there but I know, look at this, look at verse 22, that even now, very important, it says, but I know that even now, 
it looks like we are forgotten about him. It looks like it has come to our head. It looks like everything is finished. It looks like we have even forgotten that anything will happen because we put a stone on the grave. But even now, as you look at your situation and you say, look at this, look at this, look at this, humanly speaking, scientifically speaking, and uh, historically speaking, whatever you can talk about, look at the past, look at the present, look around you, look at the village, look at the town, see what has happened. But even now, even now in days or situations, something will happen. Even now, even now. And then look at that, that verse 22, whatsoever. You see what Mary was, what Martha was saying, I know. And then he said, even now. And then he used this great word, whatsoever, whatsoever. He's saying, I cannot ask. I don't remember that I can make use of that word whatsoever for myself, but I'm looking at you and I'm believing you. I look at the relationship between you and the Heavenly Father and I see your track record. I see the way you have been walking. I see the way you have been praying. That I believe that now that you are here, I know that even now, whatsoever, look at that verse 22, thou wilt ask of God. Whatsoever thou, we're not talking about a Pharisee here, we're not talking about the Sadducee here, we're not talking about the religious figure here, we're not talking about a priest, we're not talking about a Moses, we're not talking about Elijah, we're talking about the Son of God. We're talking about Christ. We're talking about the Messiah. We're talking about the King of Israel. We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That whatsoever thou will ask the Father, God, God will give it to you. I say God will give it to you. And the name of Jesus is as mighty as Jesus himself. And I can assure you tonight that... If these are taking place about four weeks ago, four months ago, four years ago, four days ago, four minutes ago, maybe something would have happened. But I know. I said, but I know. I said, but I know that even now, praise the Lord, you'll never be the same again. I, I, know, I know you've heard that before, but I'm really telling you that even now, somebody, even now, Somebody there, even now, whatsoever thou shalt ask of God the Father, the Father, God in heaven, will give it to you. Yeah. You see, that was the expression of the face of Mary as well as of Martha. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 10. Matthew chapter 8, verse 10. When Jesus had it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. If you can bring that to your life, if you can instill that to your life, if you can inject that to your life, if you can write that on the tables of your heart, that if you had been here, this might not have happened. But I know that even now, whatsoever, thou shalt ask God, God will give it unto you. God will tell the angels about you. And he will say, I have not found a great faith like this. No, not in your country. We're looking at Matthew chapter 15 and verse 28. Matthew chapter 15 verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, unto Mary, unto Martha, unto Stephen, unto... Then Jesus said unto who there? I said unto who? If Jesus can tell you this tonight, all your problems are solved. If Jesus can hear something coming out of your heart that you are saying, but I know that even now, whatsoever, thou shalt ask God, God will give it to you. He will say unto you, woman, O oh man, great is thy faith, be it unto you even as thou wilt. Be it unto you even as thou wilt. You can say amen. I'm not going to close the Bible study when you say amen. Because amen means, amen means, so let it be. And so let it be in your life in Jesus' name. And her daughter was made whole from that 
very hour. We are coming to John chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 40. John chapter 11 verse 40. John chapter 11. Tell me your verse there. Verse 40. It tells us in verse 40 here because there's somebody there that believes God tonight. I said somebody there believes God tonight. Look at verse 40. And Jesus says unto us, said not I unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see, thou shouldest see, you will see it in Jesus' name. Tonight we are looking at the subject, Christ's power to raise the dead. Christ's power to raise the dead. The three points, number one, Master's confession of life after death. Master's confession of life after death. Point number two, Mary's conviction of life rather than death. Mary's conv conviction of life rather than death. Number three, man's conversion and life through his death. Man's conversion and life through his death. We come to number one. Number one, Mary's confession of life after death. We're coming to John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, I read from verse 17 to verse 20. John 11, from verse 17. It says in verse 17, Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave for this already. Now Bethany was nice, was near unto Jerusalem, about 15 furlongs off, about 2 miles off. And many of the Jews came to Mary, and to Martha and Mary, to comfort them concerning their brother. And Martha, then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. You see here that the man, Lazarus, had died already. And she has been four days in the grave already. What do we learn from that? That Jesus still came. And he came majestically. He came confidently. He came nothing doubting. Even though he knew, he knew when he died. He knew that he had passed on. He knew that four days now he had been in the grave. And yet he came with confidence that he was going to do something. And he's coming to your life tonight. And he knows he's going to do something. And that something he's going to do, nothing will hinder him in Jesus' name. But the question is, oh, Jesus, is that confident? and so majestic and he came gloriously knowing that he had been dead for days because of matthew chapter 19 verse 26 because of matthew chapter 19 here in verse 26 but jesus beheld them and said unto them with men this is impossible if we're talking of religious men if we are talking of philosophical men, if we are talking of educated men, if we are talking of mighty men in the world, if we are talking of political powers in the world, forget about it. This is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. When you have exhausted all the intelligence of man, when you have exhausted all the knowledge of man, when you have exhausted all the help of man, God is going to begin his work. Because even though it appears, all things are over now. Four days have been in the grave with God. This is possible. He will do it. Yeah. And if you believe, you see the glory of God. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9. We're looking at verse 23. In verse 23, Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If thou canst believe, if you can look away from negative things, if you can look away from impossibility, if you can look away from what appears impossible, 
possible to man and you can look to God who makes all things possible and then you believe and nothing hinders your faith and the things you see and the things you feel and the things you hear and the tears you see in the eyes of the sympathizers will not take your face away if thou canst believe all things how many things in, I said in my life how many things in my family I said how many things all things are possible to him that believeth I'm looking at Luke chapter 1 verse 37 Luke chapter 1 verse 37 for with God nothing shall be impossible with God nothing shall be possible can you record it in your life can you record each in your mind that anything from today until the end of your life, whatever happens, whatever wind may blow, whatever flood may come, whatever challenges may come, with God in your family, with God in your life, with God in your situation, with God, nothing shall be impossible. The dream that have been dead and buried and forgotten, dig it up. Take away the stone. That dream will come alive. And the life and the project that, has, that is dead and buried and forgotten, dig it up and take away the stone. Something is going to happen. Because here with God, nothing shall be impossible. The tears who have waved and all the sorrow of there, take all that away. Because from tonight with God, all things are possible. I'm coming back to John chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 21 all through to verse 22. John chapter 11, we're reading from verse 21 and verse 22. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died, but now but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it you. Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it you. I want to pick on the word, I know. I know. I know. You see, sometimes, sometimes problems take our knowledge away. Sometimes sickness will take our knowledge away. Sometimes difficulty, challenges will take our knowledge away. You've been coming to the Bible study and you've been faithful and you've been reading the Bible. All of a sudden, look at the great problem that came upon your life. All of a sudden, you forget all the promises that you have seen. All the promises you have heard, all the lessons you have learned, a challenge comes your way, an enemy comes your way, a persecutor comes your way, a stone is rolled over your life, your promotion is affected, a temptation comes, or trial comes, difficulties come, all of a sudden you forget. But if you can dig up that thing when the problem comes, when challenges come, when sickness comes, and then you can say, I know, I know. Somebody there, I know. That is the hinge on which every door will turn. Uh, look at this, look at this. It says in Job, Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42. You know what happened to Job? You know, the sympathizers came. You know what they said? You know how he felt? And you know how he felt that how could this happen to me? This one spoke, that one spoke, everybody spoke. All the sympathizers spoke until Job came to this realization. Look at chapter 42. I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Then Job answered the Lord and said, Are you there? I said, Are you there? Verse 2. What did he say in verse 2? I know, I know. The moment you say, I know, your situation will change. Your circumstances will change. Your calamity will change. All the captivity will turn around. Look at it. It says, I know that thou canst do everything. What if you had said this earlier? If you had not been arguing with those sympathizers, if you had not been saying, well, I know that my Redeemer lives in the future. He is going to come. If you had said it for the present thing and for the present situation, I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withheld, can be withholding from thee. Look at verse 10. And the Lord taught the captivity of Job. The moment he said, I know. And the moment you say tonight, I know. Something will happen. 
something will change. Your destiny will change. Your problems will turn around. I know. You know what Martha said? I know that even now, whatsoever, whatsoever, you will ask God, God will do. You see that word whatsoever puts, uh, removes the lead from uh, the promises of God. That is, there's no limit now, there's no lead now, there's nothing covering this now. In Matthew chapter 21, Matthew chapter 21, uh, reading from verse 22, Matthew chapter 21, verse 22, Matthew, tell me the chapter, tell me the verse. Open your Bible then, and all things, wonderful, everybody say all things, and all things whatsoever, 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 ye shall ask him prayer, believing, ye shall receive. It says all things, I'm rejoicing with you already before we pray, because tonight all things whatsoever in your life, all things whatsoever in your family, all things whatsoever in your place of work, because all things whatsoever, ye shall ask him prayer, believing ye shall receive I will receive I said I will receive John chapter 15 John chapter 15, never lose sight of that word whatsoever you see there are people that pray and pray and pray and you do not remember the word whatsoever it is that whatsoever you have in your heart, you have in your prayer that's what puts you through in John chapter 15 verse 16 Jesus said ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you, I am chosen I said I am chosen and ordained you, thank God I am ordained, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And look at this, look at this, that tell me, whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Someone is going to have answer to prayer tonight. Whatsoever, whatsoever, he shall ask the Father, he will give it to you. Chapter 16, verse 23. In chapter 16, verse 23, and in that day he shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever, that's the word again, whatsoever, ye shall ask the Father in my name, he'll give it to you. Uh, come back to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I'm reading here now from verse 23. From verse 23, it says, uh, Jesus says unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Thy sister shall rise again. Your husband, your wife will rise again. The child will come alive again. That thing that is dead will come alive again. Martha says unto him, I know that ye shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Hold on. You see, many times we have faith, we manifest faith, and the first sentence that comes from us shows that we have unlimited faith in the Lord. Look at what Martha had said earlier. She had said earlier, but I know that even now, when? I said when? Even now. Whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it you. Look at what is, she said in verse 24. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again. Even now? No. Why did you change your statement of faith? Why did you change your utterance? of faith. What did you turn around? You just said now, even now, I know whatsoever you will ask God, he will do. And now you say, at the last day in the resurrection, in verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Not I will be, but even now today, I am the resurrection and the life. When it comes to your life tonight, it comes to the power of resurrection. 
and it comes to the promise of life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Jesus was talking of the present. Master was now talking of the future. Look at verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Believest thou this? Believest thou this? I'm repeating that for you. Receive on the line. Those three words. Believest thou this? Read the promise of God. When you read the promise of God, read it over and over and over. What does that mean? And let me show you what it means. Look at uh, verse uh, 22. You will read it this way. You look at any promise of God, there is how to reach the promise. Verse 22. But I know, you emphasize that word I until it registers in your heart and in your mind. You say, don't just read it and run off. You say, I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of, the, of God, God will give it thee. Read it again. But now put your emphasis on no. But I know. But I know. But I know. You see, until that registers in your heart. There are many people, they read the promises of God and they do not actually emphasize what needs to be emphasized. And then read that verse again. Say, but I know that even now, even now, that is, you're saying that about this problem, about this mountain, about this challenge, even now. And then you read it again, you say, but I know that even now, whatsoever, 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 you emphasize that, whatsoever, thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. Then you emphasize that. And then you ask yourself, you ask your soul, you ask your spirit, believest thou this? You read promise about salvation, believest thou this. You read promise about sanctification, believest thou this. You read promise about healing, believest thou this. You read promise on deliverance, believest thou this. You read promise about the rapture, believest thou this. You read any promise of the word of God, and then you stop there, you stay there. You read over and over, emphasizing important words there. And then you are asking yourself, believest thou this, and when your soul responds, Yes, I believe you are ready to pray. And tonight you pray on the basis of the promises of God in Jesus' name. And look at verse 27. She said unto him, Ye Lord, yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. That's a true statement, Martha, but you have a kind of watered down what you said before in verse 22. That's a good statement. I believe that you are the Son of God, but you have shifted from the subject you are talking about. He's saying that now I believe you are the Son of God. I want you to understand that you need to maintain your conviction. Maintain your confession. If you say that whatsoever Christ is going to ask of God the Father, you know that he's going to do it tonight. Keep on saying that, keep on saying that, keep on saying that until it is done. And it will be done. I said it will be done. And so you find here what he had said. But now Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And it cannot fail. We're looking at John chapter 5, verse 21. John chapter 5, we're reading from verse 21. In verse 21, it says, For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. That means the Father has the power to create. He has the power. The Father has the power to raise the dead. He has the power to raise the dead. The, power, the Father has the power to do everything there is to be done. And the Son has the same power. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has given to the Son to have life in himself himself. He is the resurrection and the life. And when he comes to your life tonight, everything that is dead will rise up again in Jesus' name. We're coming to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. We're reading from verse 6. John chapter 14 verse 6. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Is the way to the Father. Is the way to salvation. 
is the way to life. It's the way to spiritual life and it's the way to strength. He'll do it in our lives in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Here it tells us, For if by one man's surface, that's Adam, death range by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by Jesus Christ. You are reign in life. You reign over all your problems, all the challenges in your life, all the things that bring discouragement, all the things that want to bury you so that you can be forgotten as if you've done everything you have to do, you've done enough. Go back home and go and die and go and be buried. No, you are starting life afresh again. You are starting in the power of the Lord. In the strength of the Lord. In the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. we come to point number two now. John chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 28. John chapter 11 verse 28. Mary's conviction of life rather than death. Mary's conviction of life rather than death. Death. We come to chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 28. John chapter 11, verse 28. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The master is come and calleth for thee. In verse 29, as soon as she had this, she arose quickly. And came unto him. Think about that. She arose quickly. You see these uh, sisters, Martha and Mary. And they didn't think, well, he should have come at the right time. And four days ago now, our brother died. All the sympathizers are here. And now he's just coming. Where is his love? He said he loved us. He said he loved Lazarus. But look at this now. No, they will not murmur. I will not murmur. No, they will not grumble. I will not grumble. No, they will not blame the Lord Jesus. I will not blame the Lord Jesus. They still called him Lord. They still called him Master. They still said, you are Master of all circumstances and you are Lord of all circumstances. Even though you didn't come at the time we thought you would come, that doesn't matter. We hold nothing against you. And so we are told in verse 29, as soon as she had that, she arose quickly. Somebody shout quickly. And came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha had met him. Look at verse, verse 31. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her. This, and when they saw Mary, that she arose up, she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goeth unto the grave to weep there you see sometimes when something has happened they misinterpret your action they misinterpret your intention they say that this is what you are going to do and you have another thing in mind uh, let's learn about this mary we're coming to luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 and we're looking at verse 39 luke chapter 10 Verse 39. It says in verse 39, and she had a sister called Mary, which sat also at Jesus' feet and heard his word. When there was no problem, she sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. When Jesus came to visit them, she sat at Jesus' feet and then it says, heard his word. A look at chapter 11 of uh, John. John chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse, uh, reading here from verse uh, 32. In verse 32, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, You see, before problem, before any problem came up, she sat at Jesus' feet. Now there was a problem. Her devotion will not change. Her worship will not change. Her gratitude will not change. Her thanksgiving will not change. Her, and a dedication to the Lord will not change. When she saw the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, she was sorrowful. 
Yes, she had lost the brother, yet appeared she doesn't know what is going to happen now after this situation. But the first thing she did, she fell at the feet of Jesus. That's the secret of miracle. That when you are all right, when there was no problem, you are singing the praises of the Lord, you are witnessing for the Lord, and you are preaching the gospel. You are doing everything as if you are on top of the world. Now there's a problem. And the greatest problem of your life just came upon you. If you're going to receive a miracle, you keep on doing what you were doing before. I will continue. Somebody there said I will continue. Worshipping the Lord, I'll continue. Reading the Bible, I'll continue. Coming to the Bible study, I'll continue. Devotion to the Lord, I'll continue. Worshipping the Lord, I'll continue. Singing for the glory of God, I will continue. Preaching for the glory of God, I'll continue. She fell at Jesus' feet, and then she said, If thou hast been there, here, my brother would not have died. Hey, look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, I'm reading here from verse 59 and verse 60. Some 119. We're reading from verse 59 and verse 24. I thought on my ways and I turned my feet unto thy testimony. I made haste. I made haste. That's what Mary did. She wasn't slow. She wasn't sluggish. She wasn't dragging her feet. I said, you know, look at what happened to me. I cannot run as fast as I used to run. I cannot make haste as I used to make haste. I cannot be up and doing in the things of God as I used to be. You know, a great calamity happened to me. And because of that, I'm going to slow down. No, Mary said, I'm not going to slow down. She rose up hastily and she rose up quickly and went to Jesus. You'll still be as quick as you are. You'll still be as fervent as you are. As devoted as you are, as consecrated, as committed as so are. In verse 60, it says, verse 60, I made haste, I delayed not to keep thy commandments. You will not delay. You will not hold back. Consecration will continue. Service will continue. And the strength of the Lord, you continue in Jesus' name. And let's come back to John chapter, to, to chapter 11. John chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 32. In verse 32, then Mary was come. When Mary was come, where Jesus was, she saw him, and she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Please look up for a moment. It's very important. You see, sometimes we read the Bible, we don't understand. We hear the Lord, we don't understand. And Mary and Martha, they are not strangers to Jesus. If a Mary said, or Mary had sat at Jesus' feet, listening to the word of the Lord, and I'm asking Mary, Mary, what did you hear? What have you learned? All these years, Martha said, I believe thou art the Son of God, the one that is to come. I'm asking Martha, what have you heard all these many years, if thou hast been here? The question is, was he not there? Look at Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, the very beginning of the knowledge of who Christ is. The very beginning of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name, what's his name? Emmanuel, which being interpreted is, tell me, he was there all the time. He was there all the time. If thou hast been there, he was there. Because he is Emmanuel and is God with us. He had told his disciples already and he told them everything happening to Lazarus as if he was there physical because he is God with us, he is Emmanuel. We are coming to Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 19 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 18. 
I'm reading from verse 20. He had said this before. This event happened. Remember what he said before. Learn what he said before. Believe what he said before. Look at Matthew chapter 18. Let's just read verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, tell me, they are mine in the midst of them. Where two or three, Mary and Martha too. And before Lazarus died, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, what two or three are gathered in my name, mention his name. Mary, pronounce that name. Uh, Martha, pronounce that name. Um, Lazarus, pronounce that name. And let us gather unto him shall the gathering of the people be. He will be there. He will be there. And it's not just that he was there in the physical. He was there mightily in the spirit. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 8 verse 20. If thou hast been there, it's always there. It will be with you in your house. It's with you in your office. When that situation arises in your family, in your place of work, you must understand Emmanuel is here because he's God with us. And when two of you shall agree together, as touch anything you are asking, he'll be there in Jesus' name. Look at chapter, chapter 28, verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you, tell me, always even unto the edge of the world did anybody say amen yeah. he is there he's always there he will always be there a look at acts of the apostles acts of the apostles chapter 18 acts of the apostles chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 9 acts chapter 18 verse 9 Look at this, it says, Then speak the Lord to Paul. In the night by vision, he will speak to you. Be not afraid, but speak. Hold not thy peace, for I am with thee. You see that? We're not walking by sight. It's God. God with us. It's Emmanuel. It's always there. And it says over here, I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. Somebody said amen. amen. We're looking at John chapter 11. As we look at John chapter 11, you know what Mary said? Mary said, Lord, if thou had been there, you understand everything you've been learning. You take that to heart and everything he had said that he will always be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And then you have that understanding that even though we cannot see him in the physical, yet is there. And when you have any challenge, when you have any problem, you'll not be thinking, I hope the Lord will show up. He has already shown up. And because it's there, and because his power is there, you're going to understand that it will solve whatever problem you have in that place. He will do it in Jesus' name. And let's come back to that. John chapter 11. And I'm reading from that verse 32. John chapter 11. And I'm looking at that verse 32. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet. He said, that's a good attitude. That's a good uh, attitude of worship. Saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Now you need to take that to heart. If only I can feel this presence presence with me. If only I can sense his presence with me. If only I can touch him and I can talk to him as if he were here. Well, you understand it's there. Is he here? I said, is he here? Is he there with you? We're looking at Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41 and I'm reading here from verse 10. You see the promise he has made. He cannot fail. He cannot fail. It's always there. In Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 it says, Fear thou not for I am with thee. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. He will do it. I said he will do it. Look at chapter 43. I said chapter 43. I'm reading from verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. 
when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. That's talking about me. I said that's talking about me. I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 18. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 18. For behold, I have made thee this day a defense city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. They shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. Look, look at this, look at this, for I am with thee. You see that? We, don't, we should never have any doubt that the Lord is there. When that sickness comes, the healer is there. When that oppression comes, the deliverer is there. And when that temptation comes, the one the, who is more than conqueror, that will put you over, that one is there. You are going to explain to his power in Jesus' name. For I am with thee, says the Lord, to deliver thee. It will happen. I said it will happen. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 5. It's always there, it's always there because he said he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. Therefore you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not fear what men shall do unto me. Look at it, look at it. In Hebrews chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be, and be content with such things as he have. For he has said, for he has said, what did he say? For he has said, I said, what did he say? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Somebody shout, Amen. Second Timothy chapter 4. In Second Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I didn't hear the amen of God's people. And look at verse 18, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 16. In Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 16, we're looking at verse 20. It says over here, and they went forth, the people of God here will go forth. Will go forth and preach the gospel. Will go forth and testify about Jesus Christ. Will go forth and do the will of God. Will go forth and carry the gospel to all the people around in the fulfillment of the great commission in Jesus' name. And they went forth, and they went forth, and they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. It's always there. I said it's always there. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. We'll come to point number three now. Man's conversion and life through his death. Man's conversion and life through his death. Days. We're looking at John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 25. John chapter 11. Reading from verse 25. Here it says in verse 25, And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Look at verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Believest thou this? She says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which shall come into the world. Verse 32, then when Mary was come, where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, 
If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Verse 36, then said the Jews, behold how he loved him. As we look at this, we are, we are learning now from Mary, we are learning from Martha. We're learning from the whole situation about ourselves. Number one, look at verse 25. Verse 25, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, he that believeth in me. Jesus now took it away from the situation there, took it away from the circumstance of Martha and circumstance of Mary, and then he throws it to you. He said, if there's anybody there, he that believeth in me. He said, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. You want to see the benefits of the people that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not only about Martha. This is not only about Mary. It's about you. He that believes in me. What will happen? Look at chapter 3, verse 18. John chapter 3, verse 18. He says, he that believes on me is not condemned. Condemnation will pass away from you. The guilt of sin will be taken away. All the punishment of sin will be taken away because he that believeth on me is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, he that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. It's coming to, it's, we're not talking about Mary now, we're talking about you. We're not talking about Master now, we're talking about you. He that believeth, believeth on the Son of God, on Jesus Christ as Savior, on Jesus Christ as a substitute, on Jesus Christ as the one to take all your sins away, all the pollution, the punishment of sin away. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Thank God I believe. I say, thank God I believe. John chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 47. John chapter 6, reading from verse 47. Very late, very late, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. He that believeth on me has everlasting life. The Lord is saying, it's not only for Mary, it's not only for Martha, it's for you. As you see, I put my faith, I put my trust, I put my confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for me. He died on the cross of Calvary. He shed his blood so that all my sins will be taken away and he will give me his very life, the life of heaven, eternal life. It says the moment you believe, he'll give you that everlasting life. John chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 38. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see, life will come. Power will come. The spirit will come because you believe on him. It tells us in First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because he died for you. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because he took your place. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the one appointed by the Father to take all your sins away. In First Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 6, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, shall not be ashamed, shall not be put to shame. You see what he's telling us? He says, it's not only for Mary, it's not only for Martha. Martha, believest thou this? Mary, believest thou this? And then he comes to you and he says, believest thou this? I say, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe that you are my Savior. I believe that you are my Lord. And the moment you express that faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, all your condemnation is taken away in Jesus' name. We're coming to First John chapter 5, First John chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 5. In First John chapter 5, verse 5, it's talk, talking about those who believe, it says, who is see that overcometh? Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. 
you'll overcome the world as you believe on him. You believe on him that all the challenges of the world, he'll take away, he'll take everything away. Because now, with that faith, it makes you more than a conqueror. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he that believeth on the Son of God has the weakness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar. Because he has not believed the record that God gave of his son. We're coming back to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. We're reading from verse 26 and verse 36. John chapter 11. We're reading from verse 26. In John chapter 11 verse 26, and look at what you're saying here in verse 26. It says, And whosoever liveth and believeth, in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Thank God I believe. I say, thank God I believe. And then we're told in verse 36, Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. They recognized, even the people around, they recognized that now this man Lazarus was lodged by the Lord. But the Lord is saying here, He that believeth on me, new life will come. The old life will vanish away. Old life will die. New life will come alive. New life will be raised up. New life will be raised in your life in Jesus' name. In John chapter 5 verse 24. John chapter 5 Verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me. You see, everything hinges on the fact you believe. Everything depends on the fact you believe. Everything is focused on the fact that you believe. He that believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. From death unto life. That means conversion will come. That means a change will come. That means a transformation will come. What's conversion? Look at it. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, chapter 3, verse 19. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. As we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be conversion. Man's conversion and life through his death. Because he died for you. Because he died for everyone. As you believe in the Lord and you trust in the Lord, he'll change your life. I said he'll change your life. The old life will die and a new life will come up in Jesus' name. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, that when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Uh, the conversion we're talking about, you're a Gentile, you're a Jew, you're a religious man, you're anybody at all. That power of conversion is in the Lord Jesus Christ and it is manifested when you believe. Thank God I believe. I said thank God I believe. And when you truly believe, you are going to see a transformation, a conversion, a change. You are going to see that whatever your condition, even after you have been born again, after you have had, you know, this life, another new life will come, a better life, a richer life, a higher life, a holier life, a more heavenly life will come to you in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles chapter 15, I'm looking at verse 3. Acts chapter 15 verse 3, it says, I'm being brought on their way by the church. They passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. Those who are the Gentiles, they turned away from idols and they turned to the living God. They turned away from darkness and they turned, to the, they turned away from their ignorance of the past and they came to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. You'll be a joy to the church. You'll be a joy to the people of God. 
because a new life has come and we can see that new life through the faith you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's now in Romans chapter Romans chapter 5 verse 10. Remember, this conversion and this new life comes through his death, through his death. In Matthew, it's, sorry, in Romans chapter 5 verse 10, it says, For if when we were enemies, who are reconciled to God by the death of his son. You see that? By the death of his son. By the death of his son. He died in your place. And through that death, then it says you have new life. By the death of his son, much more. Be reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Saved by his life. Saved by his life. As you believe, that new life will come to you. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4, Therefore, we're buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, even we also shall walk in newness of life. The old life is buried. That's the life of weakness, that's the life of the world, but now that one is dead. And you're buried with Christ. And a new life has now come. Look at verse 6. Knowing this, knowing this, knowing this, that the old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Amen. Amen. A new life has come. Romans chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 2. Romans chapter 8, verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. By his death, we're made free. By his death, we're set free. And now the weakness of the past and the bondage of the past and the chase and the shackles that tied us down in the past before, everything is broken and shattered in Jesus' name. We're coming to we're coming to Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. I'm reading from verse fourteen. Second Corinthians chapter five. Reading from verse fourteen. It says in verse fourteen, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Now we're born again. Now we're saved. Now we have new life through the death of Christ. Because of that, the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we're thus judged that if one died for all, they were all dead. That he, that he, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him that died for them and rose again. Verse 17, therefore. If any man be in Christ, anybody here today like that? I said anybody here today like that? If anybody be in Christ, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, and behold, everything in your life will become new. Behold, all things are become New. Now we're coming to John chapter 11. In John chapter 11, I'm reading from verses 35 and 36. John chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 35 and verse 36. Verse 35, Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. Look up here. You see, the Jews, they were watching the situation. They were looking at the situation. And when Jesus said, where have you led him? And then they brought him there. They said, come and see. And as Jesus got there and saw Mary weeping and saw the other sympathizers weeping, he says, first of all, Jesus groaned. Not only that, Jesus wept. And their conclusion is, behold how he loved him. When you read that, you might, uh, you know, be tempted to say, I wish Jesus would love me like that, that he will weep for me. Well, I'll show you in the Bible. When it says Jesus wept because of his situation, you know what Jesus has done? He wept for you. 
But he's done more than that. Let me show you what he has done on your behalf. I'm looking at uh, Luke chapter 19. Uh, Luke chapter 19, uh, and I'm reading from verse 41. The first thing that you'll see that Jesus did for you, it says in Luke chapter 19, verse 41, and when uh, he was come near and beheld the city, he wept over the city. The cities of uh, sinners, the cities of religious people, the cities of incorrigible people, the cities that were following the Pharisees and following the Sadducees, and they did not know about their salvation, and they neglected their salvation, and they were not born again, and they did not receive him. He looked at them, and he went for them. He went for Lazarus. He went for all sinners. He went for you, so that you will come to know the Lord, and you will see how much much he loves you. When he wept for Lazarus, he said, how much he loved Lazarus and has wept for the whole city and has wept for all sinners. How much he, he loved you. Not only that, look at chapter 22 of Luke. Luke chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 44. Luke chapter 22, verse 44, I'm being in an agony. He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the earth. This is talking about when Jesus went to, the, get, some, to get some money. And then he was praying about drinking the cup of uh, judgment and the cup of punishment for you. And he said, my father, if this cup will not pass me, by me, except I drink it, that will be done. And angels came from heaven to assist and support and to help him. And he was sweating. He was sweating blood. He bled for you. And if only he wept, only tears, water coming out of his eyes. And he said, behold, how he loved Lazarus. He wept for you. He bled for you. And since he bled for you, the angels of God in heaven are saying, behold, how he loves him. Everybody that understands bleeding like that, they're saying how much he loves you. Look at First Peter chapter 3, First Peter chapter 3, and I'm reading here from verse 18. First Peter chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 18. It says, for Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened in the spirit. He worked for you, number one. He bled for you, number two. He suffered for you, number three. If he only wept for Lazarus and they said, Behold how he loves him. As he wept for you, as he bled for you, as he suffered for you, the whole of heaven is saying, Can't you see his love? Can you sense his love? Can't you taste his love? Can't you remark on that love? Can't you be melted down by that love? Behold how he loved you because he suffered for you. Number four, he bore it all for you. He bore it all for you. The pressure, the pain, the punishment, the hazards, everything, he bore it all for you. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 28. Hebrews chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 28. It says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. To bear the sins of many, the load of your sin, the pressure of your sin, the agony in your sin, the thorns in your sin, and the eternal punishment of your sin. He bore everything for you. You know, he only went for Lazarus and they said, Behold how he loved him, but he worked for you. And then he bled for you. And then he suffered for you. And then he bore the shame and the agony. He bore everything for you. In First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. Who is so self bear our sins in somebody on the tree. He bore it for you. And, and you cannot just you know, sit back and, and don't do something about this. This is love. Deep more than the ocean, high, more higher than any mountain, broad, broader than anything you can think of, that Jesus can so loved you, and he worked for you, he loved you, and he bled for you, he loved you, and he suffered for you, he loved you, and he bore it all for you, he took it for you, he took it for you, what did he take that he took for you, and we're looking at Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 14, 
Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood He also himself likewise took part of the same This for Jesus Christ higher than angels Equal to the heavenly father Higher than the highest heaven And now he took even the flesh of man He says he took a part of the same That through death he might destroy him That has the power of death That is the devil And to deliver them Who through fear of death Were all their lifetime subject Unto bondage for verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. He took the human nature, he took the flesh, so that he can come over here and suffer for you. He only wept for Lazarus, and everybody commented, Behold, how he loved him. But in your own case, he has done more than weeping for you. Yes, he wept for you. And yes, he also, well, he also bled for you, and he suffered for you, and he bore it all for you, and he took it for you, and now he gave himself. That's love, that's love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, thank God I'm a believer. And you cannot see all that and not believe. You cannot sense all that and not believe. You cannot see his love for you, weeping for you. You cannot see his love for you, bleeding for you. You cannot see his love that he suffered for you. You cannot see his love that he bore everything for you. You cannot see his love that he took the flesh of human beings upon himself. You cannot see all that and not, and not respond to that. And he gave himself for you. That's what he tells us in Titus, Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and I'm reading here from verse 14 Titus chapter 2 verse 14 it tells us that he gave himself for us he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works he loved you so much he gave himself for you to make you distinct to make you different to make you peculiar and now he died for you he died for you. He only, when you saw that he went for Lazarus, they all shouted how much he loved him. But now when we see what he has done for you tonight, as you look at Jesus Christ, that he went for you. As you look at Jesus Christ, that he bled for you. As you look at Jesus, that he suffered for you. As you look at Jesus Christ, that he bore it all for you. As you look at Jesus, that he took the shame, he took the sorrow, he took the agony, he took everything for you. As you look at Jesus Christ that he gave himself for you and finally and he said father my God my God why have you forsaken me because of you because of you and then he gave up the ghost and then he died for you we're told in Romans chapter 5 Romans chapter 5 and I'm reading here from verse 6 Romans chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 6 see what he has done for you in verse 6 of Romans chapter 5 I say for when or yet without strength when were yet without strength uh, Lazarus died because of the sickness without strength he couldn't resist that sickness eventually the sickness took his life he had no strength but Jesus eventually came there and you have no strength of your own you have no strength of your own against sin, against sickness, against Satan against evil spirit, against all the circumstances in this life and when you have no strength, see what Christ has done and when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for you. All that he has done, the testimony of heaven and earth is, Behold how he loved him. He loves you. I said he loves you. And he went through the greatest agony, the greatest pain anybody can go, can go through for anyone. And since he has done that, he's not finished yet, he's thinking about you. He actually said in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for 
Well, you, you may not have accommodation here on earth. He says, don't worry, I'm going to provide a mansion for you in heaven. Behold how he loves you. And he says, when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Look at this, that where I am, you know, some, some people here in life, even if they are their relatives, when they become president, if you want to see them, they say, yes, uh, tell him I'm busy now. You don't have access to them. When somebody that you know very well, you have been together, you have been kind of, uh, you know, early life, uh, friends, but now they are exalted. They don't want to see you, but here now he's become the king of kings and the lord of lords. He's exalted, and then through his name every knee shall bow. And he says, where I am, there you will be. Am I talking to somebody there tonight? He loves you. He loves you. He loves you, you cannot tell how, you cannot tell why. Because you are a sinner, and he is spotlessly holy and righteous, and yet he centers his love upon you. He says, I love you, my son, my daughter, give me your heart. Will you reject? Rise up and respond to that love. Respond to that love. And say, Lord, I thank you for what you've done for me. I thank you for the love that you have for me. I thank you for everything you have given for me. Lord, I respond. Lord, I respond. If you are not a Christian yet, if you are not born again yet, you commit your life to the Lord tonight. You say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. Take all my sins away. I know you've done it already because you love me and you work for me. I know you've done it because you love me and you bled for me. I know you've done it because you love me and you suffered for me. I know you love me because you bore everything for me and you took the shame for me and you suffered for me and you bore the agony for me and Lord I come. You've done everything for me now I surrender my life. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus tonight. Surrender your life to the Lord Jesus tonight and say Lord here am I. You have not withheld anything away from me. I'm not going to withhold anything from you i give my heart i give my body i give my life i give everything of god lord forgive me lord change my life give me your salvation he will do it tonight give me your salvation he will do it tonight give me that forgiveness i know you love me whosoever whosoever shall come on the name of the lord shall be saved i know you will save me tonight i know you'll forgive me tonight i know that love is going to be a practical thing i'm going to see the demonstration of that tonight he worked for you. He bled for you. He suffered for you. He did everything for you. He bought the shame for you. He took the nature of man on your behalf. He gave his life for you that he might save you. He gave his life for you that he might sanctify you. He gave his life for you that by his strife you will be healed. He did everything for you. And, and finally, he died for you. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. I receive him. I receive him. Don't reject him. I receive him. Don't reject him. I receive him. You cannot receive so great love that the Father has bestowed upon you that should be called the son, called his daughter. Lord, I receive. Lord, I believe. He will do it. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. Because he worked for you. Because he bled for you. Because he suffered for you. Because he bore it all for you. Because he took the shame for you. Because he gave his life for you. Because he died for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive. Thank you, Lord, I receive. Thank you, Lord, I receive. Accept his forgiveness. He cannot reject you. He will not reject you. Before you even knew, he suffered for you. Before you even knew, he paid the whole price for you. Thank you, Lord. I receive. I believe I'm forgiven I'm saved I'm converted my life my heart my present my past my future is now in the hand of the Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord 
I feel that love. I sense that love. I receive that love. And if any part of your life is dead, life is coming. He is the resurrection and the life. Whatever the challenge, it's up to it. It's up to it. Never late. Never late. It's come today so that you can confess like Master, Master, Lord, if you had been here, this part of my life, this part of my family would not have died. But now I believe, even now I know, that whatsoever, whatsoever, you'll ask of God, he'll give it to you. Tonight, the miracle of whatsoever is available for you. Tonight, the miracle of healing available for you. The miracle of life available for you. The miracle of resurrection available for you. You see, you see, what you all three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. You see, is Emmanuel God with us? Is here, is here. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Is here. You see, it's right there by your side. And whatsoever you're asking tonight, the Lord is doing it. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the believers in the house say, Amen. You know he's there with you. I said, you know, it's there with you. And whatever it is that you know you thought of, and something died, and something is forgotten, and it's like they put a stone there, take you away the stone. New life is coming. New power is coming. Resurrection and life coming to every part of your life in Jesus' name. Where is the Mary there? Where is the master there? Where is the Lazarus there? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you because of the name of Jesus that cannot fail. The promises that cannot fail. The power that cannot fail. Lord Jesus, we welcome your presence here. We know that you are, you are with everyone. Everyone hearing the word of God. Everyone hearing about this prayer. We know that you are, everyone, you are with everyone. And we pray, Lord, your life will flow into every life. Your power will flow into every life. Your unction will flow into every life. And whatever it is, the Lord, the Lord has seen that should not be there in your power. Remove it in Jesus' name. That sickness, that infirmity, I command you by the name that cannot fail. By the anointing that cannot fail, come out in Jesus' name. All the oppression of the enemy in your personal life, in their families, on the wife, on the husband, on the children, on the parents, on anyone there, Lord, I send forth your power. I pray, Lord, take away the stone from their life in Jesus' name. Come alive. Come alive. Come alive. Every work of the devil is destroyed there in Jesus' name. Lord, turn the situation of everyone around. New life for everyone. Healing for everyone. Health for everyone. Deliverance for everyone. Miracle for everyone. The supernatural power of the Almighty God for everyone tonight. In Jesus' name. Take darkness away, bring light. Take oppression away and bring deliverance. Take the curse and the yoke away and bring your benefit from heaven in Jesus' name. Everyone, receive the, your miracle. Receive the supernatural touch. Go back home different from your cave in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the life you give now will keep on increasing. The healing will keep on increasing. The miracle will keep on increasing. And I pray that all tears will be wiped away from all the faces of all your children in Jesus' name. 
the joy of the Lord will be the strength of everyone. Confirm it, Lord, in the life of everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray. And the believing people of God said,